real, it might be uh, apocryphal, but um, supposedly one of the, uh, the source stories or Genesis stories for algebra comes from uh, uh, an Arabic word that I think is spelled this way. And uh, we translate it as algebra. We call it algebra. And uh, suppose this word means restoration. And today is like the beginning of what all algebra is about. Okay? For, for a long number, number of years, you can study uh, what algebra is about. And that's it's kind of about restoration. There's this unknown quantity. And its identity is like lost uh, inside of this uh, equation. And we use algebra to restore its identity, to restore its value, okay? to figure out what it has to be. Right. Um, and I'm going to say today again what I've already said before. And that is, these equations that we start with are going to be not too difficult. And you're going to be able to look at it and know what the solution is supposed to be. And you're going to resist me telling you that you've got to actually show your work. okay? Uh, or maybe you won't. But if you are one of those people, then please know that I've done this for years. I, I know how to do it. I know what I'm doing. And if you, if you want to save yourself some frustration, then do what I'm asking you to do. Show your work. Uh, show the reasoning of your process. That's what showing your work is. Okay? Justify it through mathematical operations. Right? There's this thing that we refer to as mental math, uh, where if I tell you x minus 5 equals 12, it doesn't take long to figure out that x is 17. Okay. You can face this direction, Derek. It's all right. Class is starting. You're in school. Um, so we can figure out that x is 17. That's what it's got to be. There's no arguing with it. It's absolutely true. But if we don't begin practicing these, these habits that I'm trying to get you guys to, to stick to, then uh, when the problems become more difficult and it's not uh, so easy or even possible to just look at it and say, this is what the number has to be, um, then you're going to be behind because you won't have been practicing these good habits the whole time. Okay? So show your work. Don't resist uh, justifying your needs. that you have the answer. You have it. If x has to be 3, of course it has to be 3. All right. But we're going to start practicing these good habits. Okay. So first, uh, what I want to show you is this very important concept. And it's all about this guy right here. We look at it and we think we know what it means, but you, you don't actually think about it that much. If you did, uh, I guess I, I could speaking, be speaking to future versions of yourself uh, from my experience with Algebra 2 and pre-calculus and calculus and college students who um, try to do things that just don't make any sense if they respect what this sign means. Okay. What does this sign mean? It means equals, right? It means both sides are the same. If you really thought about it, it would stop just that 
knowledge, just recognizing that fact would stop you from doing lots of things that lots of algebra and algebra two pre-calculus, calculus, and onward students do, because they're just not thinking. Um, so let's start um, by, well, we want to recreate this equation using this with really just an analogy, okay? So what are, what are these things? What? Balance scale. Balance scale, yeah. It's, uh, there's lots of different kinds of scales. This is a balance scale. Um, how does it work? Nathan? Like, you put a heavy weight on one side and there's no weight on the other side. The one with the heavy side will go down because huh? it's not equal weight on the balance scale. Okay. Uh, but what if I put a bunch of, uh, you know, I think the scene where I imagine things like this being used is like ancient marketplaces where uh, you might put like a bunch of grain or something on this side, and then you put weights that you know how much they weigh on this side. So if you put a bunch of grain over here, and then you put five pounds over here, you know there's five pounds of grain. Yeah? So like if you're buying grain, and you're judging um, like price by weight, uh -huh. then you show like you get an equal amount on each side, so like five pounds or five pounds of grain. Uh -huh. That's, uh, that, that was the idea, like, long, long ago, when we, we bought things, you know, buy them by weight. That makes sense, because we can figure out how much weight there is, and if we have a price per pound or ounce or whatever, um, then we know what to charge. Um, and so, what does it mean if both sides are, well, level? If both sides are equal. Whatever is over here and whatever is over here is equal to each other, at least in weight. Okay? Um, what we have here is uh, a box marked X, okay? So this, this is supposed to represent a box of, of weight that you can't see, so you don't know how much it weighs. And so what you're trying to do is get it so that we have X on one side and we have you know, some amount on the other side, okay? Well, there's X, right? It obviously weighs something. It's just weighed down that side and made it unbalanced. How much do each one of the little red dots weigh? Those are balloons. And what you can't see, because it's kind of dark, is that this is X, okay? I'll, I'll put this guy right here, can you see it better? It's an X. It's a, not an X. X, it's a negative X. Whoa. Okay, so that X pushes down with a weight of X, and this one pulls up with a weight of X, the red balloon does, okay? We don't need that quite yet, but that's what that is. Um, so that's marked, marked, marked X. We have X on this side, right? What else do we need over there? Five. So we've got, there's one, two, three, four, and five. Um, and on this side, we need eight. And as soon as I put the eighth one on there, the computer knows that it should balance. So this is what an equation is. It starts off balanced. When, when you see blah, 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 equals blah, blah, blah. They're level. Right now they're level. And it's your job to keep them that way. Okay? Never allow that to come unbalanced. Um, and by making equal moves on both sides, you want to get it so that just an x is left on one side. And then all the stuff that's on the other side, well, since they're balanced, that's what x will be worth. So what, what can we do to get x by itself? Okay, this isn't an equal sign, no, this is a scale. So oh, we, I mean, you're not wrong, yeah? Subtract five from both sides, it's a scale. Hmm. Okay. Well, if I walked up to you and you were, you were standing at a scale and I said subtract five, that would be kind of a weird thing to say, right? So we're standing the right, yeah. Well, how about if we take five away, okay? We'll take, I mean, I know it's the same thing, but physically we're moving five things, we're taking five things away, okay? And in math we would call that subtraction. So we take, well, when we take a one away from that side, it's yeah, unbalanced again. So we side. need to balance that out by taking one off of this side. Taking one off of this side and one off of this side. Okay. We're going to want to take three more off. I think I didn't. I don't know what I did there. I can't figure out how many I took off. Okay. So I do need to take one more off of both sides. Now it's balanced. If I take some stuff off of this side, 
And I don't take stuff off on this side, they're not, it's not balanced anymore. So I need to do the exact same thing to both sides. Uh, otherwise it gets off balance and now I'll never know what x is equal to. Um, so we'll clear that out and uh, we'll throw another equation in there. And after that we'll, we'll, we'll then go to actual equations and put away this analogy. Um, like 3x, 3 equals nine. X is of course three. You have, if you were gonna multiply three by something, you get nine and you multiply it by three. Um, but what we're gonna do is see this happen on scale and then hopefully carry it over to uh, the equations we're gonna solve. Uh, so how are we gonna represent three X on this side? Put three of the x's. Three of the x's. Yeah. Here's an x. Right? There's one of them, but, but I have another one. That's plus another x, right? That'd be two x's. Two x. Plus another x. That'd be three x. And three times something just really means that thing plus itself plus itself. X plus x plus x. That would be three x's. And on this side we have nine. Um, say I subtract an x, I take, just take away an x. So what do I need to do on the other side? Take away, take away three. three. We don't know that x is three. We can't operate with the assumption of what x is. Okay. If we don't know what x is, how do we, can we, if we take away an x on one side, what do we need to do to the other side? Take, take away on you have to where they balance. Take away one at a time off of the Okay, that, that would work if we had a scale, but it's not going to work when we have an equation. You can't just take off until it, it balances. We can't see that. We just have to know that it's balanced and keep it balanced. Can you subtract x? You would have to subtract x on both sides, right? But we don't, let's say, let's pretend we don't know what x is. There are no x's over here to take away, to subtract. <laughs> Trevor? Why is three? What's that? Why is both sides of the equal sign? I didn't hear what you said. No, I, I don't know what you said. Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't you go like three divided by three x and then you go now you divide by three? Three so you divide one divided by three. No, you take like three x over three and then you on the other side you put I'm not looking at the equation. I'm going to just I'm going to cross out this equation. We're not talking about the equation right now. We're talking about the scale. Right. So if I were to just take these two x's away and think of it that way, just like subtract two x, take two x's away. I don't have any x's over here to take away, and we're pretending like we don't know what x is worth. If I gave you an equation where we didn't know where x would work, it would be more complicated than this one, and it would be hard to follow. So I'm using this simple one. We don't have x's to take away. Um, so how do we think of this? How do we get it so that we can do the equal move on both sides? Okay. You take away one from the left side to see how many it takes from the right side to, for it to balance out. That, like I said, is good if you have a, an actual balance, an actual scale. When we do transfer the, this kind of thinking into the equation, we can't do that, right? We can't see that they're balanced. We're just saying that they're balanced. What is something that we could, like, what can we do equally to this side that we could do to this side? Yeah. We could use the balloons. <laughs> balloons. We could use the balloons. Um, but it doesn't, we don't need to use the balloons. Trevor? Well, if you know, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out this balloons, but I, if three axes uh -huh. on one side balance out nine axes, uh -huh. then each x stands for three. Uh -huh. So like, if you take off one x, you can take off three. 
Okay, so you're, you're starting from the assumption that we know what x is worth. Okay, right? But we want to figure out what x is. Can't you just divide by minus 2? What's that? Can't you just divide by minus 3? I heard divide in 3. I didn't hear Divide 9 and 3. Divide nine and three. I'm not sure what you mean by divide 9 and 3. Just take 9 and divide by 3. Just take 9 and divide by 3. <laughs> right, okay. You can divide 9 by 3. And does that make it, should we divide the other side by 3? Just divide 9 by 3. Just 9? <laughs> Just divide 9 by 3? Okay, so if we take 9 and we divide it into 3, which means we want to look at 1 third of 9. 1 third of 9 is 3. Okay, so that's one third of nine. Okay, two x's are going to go away, but it's not going to be because we took them away. We subtracted two x. If if you're getting annoyed, um, then I don't know. Take a nap. Or something. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> What we have, wait, I'm going to put these back. Yes? You know you have nine small cubes and you know you have three large cubes, so I mean, you know how many cubes of each you have, so at some point each one has to be worth the same amount. Like, you have to even out, you have three large cubes, you have to even out with the nine small ones, you have to make them all have even amounts of the small ones. Yes. Each, each of these has to be worth the same as each other, right? Please, you guys, have some politeness. Each of these has to be equal to each other. Every x has to be worth every other x. Okay. There's three of them, and on this side we have nine things, nine units. Okay. Um, what we have on this side is is three of the thing that we want to know the value of. No, you're taking a nap, right? Mm. You thought that was funny earlier. It could keep being funny now. Okay. There's three of the thing that we want to know the value of. All right. Um, but we only want to know the value of one of them. So this side is three times as much as we want to, to know about. Right? Um, so how much of this side do we want to, to have, to know about? What's that? One. One of them. But how much of this side is that? Oh, one block. One block of how many? X. So like we try to find the unit rate, uh, and then like the unit rate would be if we try to find the unit Um, we're not really looking for a rate here. Okay. I don't know. This side has three of what we're looking for. We only want one of them, right? Yeah. Just take one two x box. You don't know X is three. X is two equal to three. It's not. Okay. You're getting frustrated. I'm getting frustrated. Because you guys, I, I want you to, to play my game for a few minutes. Okay? You think you know what you're doing, but if you did already know what you were doing, you wouldn't need this class. Okay? You could just take my final test and be done with it. Right. There are much more complicated concepts than this. And viewing it this way is one thing that I believe will help you. It's helped me, okay? So if you will, stop telling me that x is 3. I don't care that you know that x is 3, because we won't always be able to look at it and just know, all right? So just be patient and understand what I'm trying to say. Tell me. You could always remove two of the blocks from x side and then remove if we're just looking at the scale, remove one of the other one blocks one at a time. Is that not? Remove them one at a time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the time. Yeah. Like, like if you move the move two of the yeah. X ones, then you have you move one of the one box, yeah. one of the, yeah, you just get until you get down to what makes it even. That's this is the third time Millie was saying that doesn't work in an equation. When equations don't look equal. They're just, you're just told that they're equal. Okay. So what I'm saying is that there's there's three of these. We, we want to just know what one of them is worth, right? So the information we're given is three times too much, right? We want to know about one third of this side. A third of this side, okay? So if we want to look at a, a compare a third of this side to then a third of this side, maybe. I have a question. Yeah. Kind of like what Jay said, where it's like, since there's nine on this side yeah. and three on this side, I'm not saying that x is three, uh -huh. it's just... Since, well, because like 9 divided by 3 ends to be 3. Yes. So then, isn't that what you're trying to get at, basically? Uh, well, 9 divided by 3 does wind up to be 3. And what does this divided by 3 wind up to be? 1. 1, one. one x. x. 1 x. Yeah. So if we look at 1 third of this side, which is one of those, and then we see there's 9 of these, and we know 1 third of that if we were divided by 3 would be 3. Okay. We've, in that way, we've done the same thing to both sides. We haven't taken away 2x and taken away 6 because we didn't know that x was worth 3. We've looked at one third of this side and one third of this side. Okay. You see the difference? Yeah. Okay. So that, which took a lot longer than I thought it would, a lot longer than it took in the other class. I don't know why. We were so resistant to playing my game. Now we'll come over here, uh, and we'll apply that, that same idea that both sides have to remain the same. The only thing that you have to do, the only thing that is the right thing to do, is to keep both sides equal to each other. And anything other than that would be the wrong thing, but if, as long as both sides stay the same, then it's got to be okay to do. All right? So I will, let's see. Number 10, number 10, t minus 5 equals 7. Okay, so I just want you to do that. And I don't want you to tell me that what t is 12, no, t is that yeah, um, I want you to show me justification for that. How do you eliminate everything that isn't T on one side? Get the answer on the other side.
not the important piece, okay? It is important to, to be able to figure it out. But being able to look at that and just say, why well, no, the number that that would have to be with is 12. Okay, it's the, it's the algebra approach that we're trying to get to, all right? 
because I could, I could take an equation like this, throw in some fractions, maybe some decimals, some square roots, right? And now it becomes not so clear, all right? So let's start now. Let's start at, the, at this, this pretty basic level, understanding the concepts that I'm trying to convey to you, so that later, when I'm saying, and then you do this to both sides, and you do that, and you're just saying, okay, I get that, I get that, I get that. Right? Instead of saying, well, I'm back here well, I, where I know that 12 would have to be the number I subtract 5 from to get 7. Right? You see what I'm saying? Okay. I know that, that solving it the way that I'm asking you, is it's overkill for a, a question like this. I know what t has to be. But it won't take long before you can't just look at it and know. All right? Um, so let's, I'm going to pull that scale back up and, and show you what I want you to do. The, the idea that I'm trying to get to today. So we have x, right, instead of, because I don't have t here, uh, plus we do a negative, negative, this negative 5 uh, is equal to, what is it, 7. seven. Okay, x minus 5 is equal to 7. Okay, so what we have is x. Now how are we going to represent minus 5? Minus 5. This is, this is negative, wait. Minus 3, 4, 5. Right? X minus 5 is equal to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, what we want to do is something that uh, leaves x or an equivalent of x by itself. Okay, it leaves an equivalent of x over here. Right now we don't have x. We have x minus five. All right. Um, and I have balloons on this side, and I don't have any balloons over here to take away. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll counteract those five balloons that are pulling up. Right? How can I counteract? Can I counteract this this one balloon that's pulling up? Yeah. Um, add. A block that's pushing down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But now they're not balanced anymore. Right. Okay. So let's let's ba let's let's cancel out all those uh, you know counteract all those balloons, and then we'll just do the same thing to the other side. And we'll know that that would have to be balanced. So I'll, I'll counteract that one and that one and then this one, this fourth one, this fifth one, right? Well, a, a pulling up of five would be balanced out by a pushing down of five. Right. So on this side. What do we have the equivalent of? Just x, right? This, this side now only weighs as much as x weighs. Right? Because there's one balloon, pull, one balloon pulling up and another one pushing down, and four other pulling up and, another, and uh, four other pushing down, and it's, it's all balanced out. On this side, we need to, we added five to that side, so we need to add five to this side. Uh, which, of course, it's not going to let me do. When we get done adding five to this side, how many will we have? We'll, we'll have 12, yeah, we'll have 12. We would have uh, the equivalent of canceling out uh, these negative, these five negatives, and these five positives cancel each other out, okay? And on this side, we would have 12. Let's, uh, just need two more. Maybe I'll just take these away here. Okay. So now again, x is by itself, and um, no, I still, I still can't put 12 on that side. It's, it's just a, a limited program. Okay. So we'll come back to this situation. So we have t minus 5. We've got t with 5 pulling up is something we can think of. It's a negative amount. Right. To, to counteract that negative amount, we add 5 to that negative amount. Because negative 5 plus 5 is equivalent to having done nothing. There's nothing happening here. So it's t plus nothing. And then we add 5 to both sides. t plus nothing equals 12. Well, if we're adding nothing, it's just the same as t. So t is 12. Again, do we need to add 5 to both sides to figure out that, that x is 12 or t is 12? No, we don't. But will we soon? Yeah. It's going to start getting harder. I start multiplying t by numbers. 
uh, and subtracting fractions and all this kind of stuff, we're going to want these habits uh, well practiced um, and not be resistant to them. Tell me G is 4. We know G is 4. We know 5 times 4 is 20. We go through the steps of counteracting those things that aren't G. What you want is 1G by itself on one side and all the other stuff over there. And once you have G on one side and all that other stuff on the other side, you'll know what G is. I know G is 4. Tell me G is 4. So we use this word cancel out like it, like it means something. It doesn't, I don't know. It's, it's kind of an ambiguous thing that, that people use, and then they lose sight of what it actually means, and I don't like it. Okay. It may slip out of my mouth because I learned that, but uh, we'll try, I'll try not to use the word cancel out because it sounds too magical. It just cancels out. What actually happened? That's what I'm going to show you. That's what I'm going to do every step. Even though you know it cancels out, let's look at why. Right? So what we have here is five times more than we want to have. We want only one of these things, right? which means that this must be five times more than we want. This is five times more than we want. This is five times more than we want. So what we want is one-fifth of this. One-fifth of what this side is worth is what we want to know. So we take a fifth of that. Uh, this side, of course, is 4. Um, 5G over 5. Now, rather than just crossing up these 5s and say they canceled out, let's make sure we understand the math that just happened. We can write this as 5 over 5 times G over 1. Do you, do you agree with that? Would that be equivalent to 5G over 5? Mm -hmm. Multiply straight across, we get 5G over 5. <coughs> Now that we've written it this way, what is 5 divided by 5? It's 1. It's the number 1. It's not cancel out. It's the number 1. 5 divided by 5. 5 divided by 5 is the number 1. So now we have the number 1 times g. And what is 1 times g worth? Well, 1 times g is worth g, right? It's g. 1 times g is g. 1 times anything is itself. And g is 4. See what we're doing? We're trying to get 1g, right? 1 times g, and plus 0, plus nothing else. That's what we want to have on one side, where everything that's being done to g gets counteracted. The inverse of each of those things happens to that side, so that it's essentially uh, just g on that side. Um,
sure you guys that that's a negative 17 times 5. So this side is the opposite of 17 times as much as we want to know about. Okay. So let's see, we could divide by 17, right? Because it's 17 times bigger than we want. We could divide this by 17. What's 187 divided by 17? Yeah, 11. 11 is equal to negative r, right? 17, negative 17 divided by 17 would be negative 1. Negative 1 times r. So we know that the opposite of r is equal to positive 11. So positive r must be worth negative 11. Or on this side, we could divide by negative 1. Divide this by negative 1. Negative 11 equals positive r. We multiply by negative 1 on both sides. Or we could have divided by negative 17 to start with. So I, I'm, I'm just wondering something. As I, as I go around and I look, I see a lot of uh, multiplying by 3. This is great. Okay. Multiplying by 3, uh, I, I think it, it seems like just from the way you're writing it, maybe you just know that multiplying by 3 is what you're supposed to do. Because you're dividing by 3, so you're going to multiply 3, and then you just know that it cancels out. Because what I see a lot of is uh, it's this, and then I see multiply by three. Like, okay. Three is being multiplied by three. You're supposed to like do the inverse of what's happening you tell them you're being fair in Uh huh. Yeah. That's right. But when you say that, when you say what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to do the inverse. Like you're quoting some rules. And 
if you invented those rules because you had done so many of these problems, you know, that'd be great. But, but what's happened, what happens a lot, is somebody else figures that out. They, they do all of that, uh, you know, problem after problem after problem after problem, and they apply what's called inductive reasoning. They say, ah, oh, look, all the problems like this, where you have y divided by 3, or y divided by 5, or y divided by anything, when you have y divided by something, then if you multiply by that same number, uh, then they balance each other out, they negate each other, and now we're just left with the equivalent of y. So then they, they say all problems like that are, are work that way. And then they come to you as a student and they say, and they say but look, if something's being divided by 3, multiply it by 3, and it'll cancel it out. Okay? Do you, maybe you do, but maybe you don't. Okay? Do you really understand? Why? If you don't really understand, then you should take a moment and let yourself understand it. Okay? The more little things you can understand, especially at this beginning level, the better it'll be, the easier it'll be to read. Okay? So, and this is just completely speculation on my part, but when I see a 3 down here multiplied by a 3, it makes me think that you maybe don't know what's going on here. Because if you just multiply this 3 by the number 3, that would be a 9, right? the way that it's written. This 3 times this 3 would be a 9. It would be, yes? It's 3 times y over 3. That's 3 times 3. OK, maybe you get that. But what, when I see this, why, why is it written this way? Like, I see it physically down there with the other 3. Right. So. If you if you don't have that misunderstanding, that's fine. But I, I think there are some you do. Okay. If you have it written down here in the denominator, I I just I'm wondering if you know. And if you don't, here's I'm gonna talk about it now. Okay. So what we're multiplying by three is yes. Okay. So like, are you asking why it's in its like why it's in a specific place when you multiply it, or are you asking why it's being divided? Why why is the okay. why why is it being divided by three? Well, why is being divided by three? Because whoever wrote this problem decided it should be divided by three. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my question is, and, and if you want to answer me, if you, if you did write this, what's why is it down there? Why why did you put it down there? Did you write it like this? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I'm referring to people who did write it this way. I saw several. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're willing to, to say why it's written down there, that's what I'm curious about. If you didn't write it down there, then... I kind of wrote it down there. I just did like the multiplication sign uh, the dot, and then it was like right in the right. Like, if you to put it anywhere else, saying that if we wrote it this way, like this, that wouldn't be what we want? No. Yes, it is what we want? No. It's not what we want. <laughs> no, I think it's good that you talked. I think it's good that you brought that up and said that, because now the, the question's on the table. Is that what we want? Is, no. is this uh, is this what we want and this is what we don't want? Okay. If you don't know, you can learn. You can pay attention and you can listen and watch. Yeah. That's not what we want either. This isn't. No. And this isn't. Uh, no. Well, the way I write it is I write. When I do it, I have to read over uh, y over 3, and then I'm right next to where it's, the, the, the division symbol. I put the, the multiplication symbol there and write giant 3 next to it. And then I just x off. So you write this 3 with a y over 3 like this? Uh, 
kind of way. I, I it doesn't really, I don't put it next to him. I just, cause it's, that's how I wrote it on this one, yeah. It goes next to Yeah, this way then you can just S off the bottom and you're left with Y. So like this? Yeah, pretty okay. much. So you did this, you wrote it this way. I can't see, sorry. Can't see, oh. Thank you. Oh, you, so you, like you didn't put it that high, is that what you're saying? I don't know. I, I have to use it now. Yeah. You have it like that. Okay, Hunter? I do it like that, so I know what to do. Do it like this? Yeah, so I cross off each one. Uh -huh. like just and when so you cross that out, what's happening? Then you just it's turning into a wall. What's turning into a wall? The three is turning into a one. Why? Because three divided by three is one. That's exactly right. Okay. So, in which scenario is it clear that three is being divided by three? That one. This one. What about this one? No. Is this different from this? Yes. 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 No. No. Yes. No. Three over one. Why are you counting one? Well, um, let's say I had three y. Okay. Why would you want three y? Why would you want to what? Have three y. Are you being funny or you have a real question? No, that's legit. Okay, why would you want to have three y? How do you mean that? Well, you got y three underneath yeah. it. Right. Why do you mean three times y dividing it by three already? Okay, so let's so let's not start with three y. Let's start with y divided by three. Okay. So we have y divided by three, which is a third of y. Right. Like here's let's say this is y. Right. Okay. And. And what we have is a third of y. Y divided by three, a third of y. Okay. But how many y's do we want? Three y. You want no y. One. One, 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 y. one, y. one, one y. y. One y. One y. Yes? Y over one is one whole one. One. Does that make any sense? Let me stay with this. Okay. What we started with, let me write it again. Y over, we started with y over three equals five. Okay. We started with one third of a y. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the y divided into three pieces, we have one of those pieces. Okay. Well, we don't want that. We want one y, right? So how many of these pieces do we want All of them. to make the whole? One. Two. One? This is one third of one. Did you want another? Okay, so you want a total of how many thirds? Three, <laughs> three thirds of y, right? You want to take this amount and you want to multiply it by three because if you have three of these, there's one, there's two, there's three, now we have the whole thing. Now we have a whole y. Okay. That's the real reason why we would multiply this side by three. Okay. The question is, the obvious truth is, the way we are writing these things, are they're confusing us. Okay. We don't realize that some of them are incorrect and some of them are equivalent to each other because we don't spend much time thinking about what's actually going on. We just say, I know what I'm supposed to do, and I know that it does do this, but I don't know how it works. Okay? And that's, that's fine for a while, but eventually you're going to want to do some fairly complex stuff, and you're going to want to know the inner workings of, of all these things, of all this math stuff. Okay? Be like if you had a car and you really wanted to get into this car, you want it to modify this car, or maybe it's, it's more like computers, like I can use a computer pretty well, and I can Google my problems and figure out what I need to do, and I can copy and paste code, into, but I don't know how it works, right? So if I wanted to put together a computer or design a piece of software, I can't do that, right? I'm not a computer scientist, I'm not a computer programmer, I don't get how that stuff works. Or at least I get it a really little bit, right? But if I did start to understand how to program a computer, I could actually make programs 
uh, customize things so that they solve the problems that I have. The way it is now, I just like put together things that other people have made and I make it work. But it's really not the most efficient, the best way. It does what I need it to do, but I don't know how it's doing. <laughs> okay? And I can show you how to do it, use it the same way that I do, but I, I just don't get the inner workings. All right? I can't, there, I, there's a limit on my abilities here. All right? That's what I'm saying about this. If you just multiply by three, because you see it's divided by three, and you know that's what you're supposed to do, and you know that it does cancel out, there's a limit. Okay? So if we want to go any deeper, which we are going to do, then we should, we should understand what's actually happening. And we should understand that this is the same as this. And we should know why we're left with a y by itself. Okay. So the reason why we'd multiply this by 3 is because it's one third of what we want in the first place. If we multiply this by 3, right, that's y divided by 3 is worth one third of a y, and we want three of those thirds. Okay. So um, let's start with this, and I'm just going to back and erase this. y divided by 3, and you all know that you're supposed to multiply by 3. Okay. So there it is. I, even, I wrote it right here, and then Hildy, Hildy said, no, not there. Right there. Right? That's interesting to me, because it, it's really not any different. Okay, but a lot of it's different. And several of you have been thinking that all these things are different. Jared? I haven't set up like that, but... Instead of a 15, I have a 5 set up there. Oh, this should be a, this should be a 5. I don't know why that's, I have 15. And from there, I uh, took it to where 3 times 5 went to 15, and I had come down the arrow. Uh -huh. I had y times 3 uh, over top of 3, and yeah. I had the 15 over 3 at the same time, uh -huh. with the equal sign. I have one more arrow that says y times 1, since the 3... Yeah. And the 15 divided by 3 come down to a 5. So y times 1 would come out to y is y over 5. That's how well, I think, think I'm set up. I think you divided by 3 too many times there somehow. One of those steps I think I, I counted like an extra dividing by 3. Um, yeah, I, would, I, I, I don't quite have, but you're, you had lots of good stuff there. You have, uh, you know, you're, you're actually dividing 3 by 3 and getting 1, and uh, you're doing the same thing to both sides. Just something, I'll look at it uh, in a bit and, and figure out what, uh, what you might have done. Um, but what we have on this side is, is 3 times y over 3, okay? To make sure that everything lines up the way that we want to, it's, it's helpful a lot of times to carry out the math, and if we're going to multiply fractions, let's multiply fractions, okay? What fraction is 3? What fraction can we make out of 3? 3 over 1. 3 over 1. Okay, this is helpful to, to either write down or to just picture in your mind. 3 over 1, which is 3, times y over 3. That's what we're attempting. <laughs> This is what we have before we left. Oh, we're going. Okay. 3 over 1 times y over 3. Right. And similarly to, to uh, a problem we wrote up before, we can write this as 3 over 3 times y. Just kind of swap that stuff around. Because multiplication is commutative, and when we multiply fractions, we're just multiplying straight across. So we'll just put this 3 over here. This 3 can come over here. And have the 1 over here instead of 1 times 3. have 3 times 1, right? y over 1. So 3 divided by 3 is what? One. One. one, okay. This, instead of 3 over 3, is the number 1. Uh, and 1 times y divided by 1, that all that stuff just leaves y, and y is 15. And we can check this by putting it back in the original, right? This was the original right here. y divided by 3 is equal to 5. 15 divided by 3 is 5. <laughs> you're doing things and you're just putting numbers in places and you're crossing them out because you know it's supposed to do that. 
Okay. Just like I know when I press send on an email, it's supposed to go to Mr. Parsons. I don't know how it does it. Okay. But if I ever had a problem with it, I probably would need to know how that works. That's why I have to call Mr. Jarvie and tell him, hey, here's not working. And he comes and does this really easy fix. And I feel really lame. Because he knows what's going on, and I don't. Um, so don't be someone who doesn't know what's going on. And when something goes awry, is lost. Let's uh, jump over to okay, problem like 43. Three halves. times k, how do we negate that multiplication by three halves? Yes. Hey, why not? You know, we had, um, what did we have? Five times g equals 20, and we divided by five, right? We got five over five is one, one times g. That sounds like it should work, right? Three halves divided by three halves, right? This is just really now three halves over three halves times k, 3 halves over 3 halves times k, all right? And so we got to divide both sides by the same thing, divide that side by 3 halves. What's 3 halves divided by 3 halves? 1. 1. Anything divided by itself is always 1. As weird as it might look, fraction, decimal, 
uh, square roots, anything. If you divide something by itself, it's always 1. So that part's easy. This part is 1. Okay. And on this side, we have 1 times k. So we've done it. We have 1 times k. On this side, though, we're trying to divide 18 by 3 halves. We're trying to divide something by a fraction. How do we do that? Yeah, sorry. Two to the reciprocal of 18 over 1. Reciprocal of 18 over 1? Yeah. So we know there's a reciprocal involved, okay? I don't need you to tell me it's a reciprocal of three, of, of three halves, because it must be the reciprocal of the other one, right? Can you prove that, it's, that, that that works? No, that doesn't work. Multiplying by the reciprocal of three halves? No, like, oh, no, like you do the reciprocal of three over two. Yeah. And then you, multiply, you um, uh, two goes into 18, so you simplify that. Wait. How much of this did you do in your head? Uh, Too much, I think. Too much, yeah. Okay. You just said multiply by the reciprocal of 3 halves, so 3 over 2, right? Yeah. What's the reciprocal of 3 over 2? 2 over 3. 2 over 3. So yeah. 18 times the reciprocal of 3 halves, which is 2 over 3. Yeah. Right? 18 over 1. You, oh. Then you just said 18 divided by 2. Yeah, I, th I thought the 2 was on the bottom. Because so like, you're doing too much in your head is what I said. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, but wait, 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 wait. Okay. It sounds like we can't justify that we multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Some think it's the reciprocal of the numerator, some think it's the reciprocal of the denominator. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Oh, dear. Trevor? Okay, so you flip 18 over. No. You know why it can't get Now, listen. In a fraction, we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing. Okay? I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay? Two thirds. What's three halves times two thirds? That's six over six. Six over six, six, six is one. Oh no. Okay? This is now one. Okay, multiply this by two thirds as well. We've got to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing. So now this is 18 over 1 times 2 over 3 over 1. We're dividing the whole thing by 1, which doesn't change anything. So 18 times 2. Reciprocal of the denominator. Right? 18 divided by 3 is going to leave us with a 6. Okay? 6 times 2 over 1 times 1? 12. 12. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. But what I don't want to see is you have your calculator out and you take 18 and you divide it by 3 halves and you get the answer 12, but you don't know what it did, you don't know how it does it, you don't know that you could multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. The more knowledge you withhold from yourself, the more difficult it's going to be as we try to do more difficult problems. Okay. Um, well, it looks like we're just going to be in 3.1. As you solve these problems, as you solve these equations, remember that what you're trying to get is if there's something multiplied by x or k or whatever, Negate that thing. Get it to be a 1. If you had 1 times k, that would be the same as k. Right? So if you're multiplying k by 3 halves, if you divide by 3 halves, 3 halves divided by 3 halves is 1, so you have k. Uh, if you have something added on to x, try and get that thing that you're adding on to equal 0. If you're adding 5, subtract 5. So that now, when you add and subtract 5, you're essentially doing nothing. They're negating each other. Don't I know you guys have solved simple equations like this in pre algebra already. Okay? Don't just do what you know you're supposed to do and not know why it actually works. Not be able to do the arithmetic. You have a choice right now at the very beginning. Right? This is the beginning of solving equations all over again. You can pretend like you had never solved an equation before and start all over again. You have a choice right now to either learn it in a solid, predictable, justifiable way, 
or to rely on your memory of what somebody else told you you're supposed to do. Because that will stop working eventually. Okay. Some new situation is going to come up, and I'm going to ask you to apply what you know about it. And you're going to try and apply what you remember about it. And then we're just, what I'm going to do is take you all the way back as far as we need to go. So I get to some place you do understand and you know what's going on. You know the math. And then we work our way up. If you, if you don't understand the underlying stuff, that, that 3y over 3, that 3y over 3 is the same as 3 over 3 times y. Or it's the same as 3 times y over 3. If you don't know these are the same, that's going to be a big roadblock to you. It's going to make it very difficult. So it's a good time to choose right now at the very beginning. Do what might be difficult right now, but easier in the future.